And the scholars today are trying to say, look, we just had these, these views that are out there. They were floating. They were kind of coexisting. The fact is what they're not telling the kids and they're not telling the public is both views knew of the other and criticized and said we can't live with that view. They weren't trying to join up. That's right. Talk about how the Gnostics looked at their own critics. Well, the way the Gnostics looked at their own critics, and you can see this in some of the materials that they And the have. critics were the church fathers. The critics were the church fathers. That's who they were criticizing. And we have some, uh, some quotations here. They're short from the Apocalypse of Peter. Uh, the leaders of the competitive view, that would be uh, the apostles and the bishops and the line that they represent, are described as empty channels in the Apocalypse of Peter 79.30. And just in case you want to look it up. Yeah. And then in the Testimony of Truth 34.26, it said of the traditionalists, they do not have the word which gives life. Now that's pretty clear. That's pretty clear that the Gnostics were teaching, you, we can't coexist with these people, they don't have the truth. That's what the Gnostics were saying about the Christians. What did the Christians say about the Gnostics? Well, what the Christians were saying about the Gnostics can be indicated in a text like 2 John 7. And 2 John 7 says, Many deceivers have gone out into the world, people who do not confess Jesus as Christ coming in the flesh. This person is the deceiver and the Antichrist. Now that's also pretty clear. We may not have the word heresy being used here, but... That's what you're saying. But if that goes back to 85-90 A.D., these groups in full bloom weren't over there. This was knocking the idea that was emerging at exactly. that time, right? Exactly right. That what was happening was is that this view was emerging because... Uh, because, because let's, and notice what it is that they're knocking. The problem isn't that Jesus is human and needs to be developed into the divine. It's the problem going the other way. Jesus, the Christ, has not come in the flesh. He's not human. That's the first thing to note about this. The second thing to note about it is that, that some of these ideas were emerging because they, they percolated in the Greek philosophy of the time. The Gnostic ideas. The Gnostic ideas. And Gnostic ideas are really what we call syncretistic. It's a mix. Okay, it's a mix of Christianity with Greek philosophy. They were pulling from all sources. That's right. They were trying to do whatever they could because their goal was to say, let's make Christianity more palatable to the culture. And this is a more palatable way to think about it because of the way people thought about God. To think that God would lower himself to become human? Ah, oh, come on, let's do something else.